There says Biden sign. I don't know if I should laugh at that or if I should roll my eyes at it. In fact, you guys let me know in the comments, would you laugh at that or roll your eyes at it? I want you to listen to this man for a moment and then it's gonna cut to a video that can show where someone like him can theoretically end up. And then I wanna explain why after that, why theoretically that can happen. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, it's probably not gonna happen but I wanna theoretically explain why it could happen to someone like that. And this is a channeler, and then I wanna talk about why I believe this is very poor channeling in my opinion, which I'm entitled to, let's remember that. I have some very grave concerns about what's going to happen on election day. If you live here and uh, perhaps some of the, some of your, a lot of your viewers are outside of the US, but you have a, some very old dynamics and some very old uh, candidates uh, running right now. In other words, you look at the energy behind it. It's very old. Uh, old power games, old ways of doing things, old ways of fighting. So what's on stage for the elections is old. Uh, and the concern here is that this country, uh, America, is so divided right now that no matter who wins this upcoming election, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, that there is going to be a very the potential for a very, um, very disruptive um, civil violence uh, in the country. The election will probably be very, very close because that that chasm between uh, the the duality between the two is is almost so evenly balanced. Uh, let's say the one party wins, uh, and but by a narrow margin, and we're going to have it's going to make the last election look like child's play. There's going to be burning, destruction, violence in the cities. There's going to be disruption of uh, the distribution patterns across the United States, and that will be far-reaching. It won't just be about the U.S. It will uh, apply to other countries. I have some very grave concerns about what's going to happen on Election Day here uh, in the U.S. Uh, let's say, for instance, um, if Donald Trump is the Republican candidate and he wins, you can almost guarantee that cities are going to burn that night. Uh it's not just because of the elections. It's because of some very old pent-up energies, old, old energies that have been around for a while, and they're going to flare up. Uh, and that's why I say right now, it's time to bring your light to the planet. Don't choose Republican or Democrat. That is, if you are, you really aren't doing the job of being a, a consciousness bringer on the planet right now. You're taking sides. There are no sides. Uh, but it's about bringing light. So humans can find a different way to handle uh, the, the, the potential crisis. And instead of burning the cities, find ways to, to build the new. The first thing I want to say is that I'm not going to disclose the channeler's name. I'm not going to ex disclose the identity beyond the face there that we see, the video that we see there. Um, I'm also not going to disclose the podcaster, the interviewer, because the point of this video is not that I say anything bad about anybody or anything like that. Although uh, we do have to be discerning and I'm probably not going to say some favorable things at this time. But it isn't my goal, it isn't my desire to hurt anyone or say bad things about them. That's not a goal. But, you know, there is a faction of uh, spiritualist, spirituality, whatever you want to call it, that um, I would say has some really poor perspectives 
that no perspective really is poor, no perspective really is wrong, it's a perspective. But I would argue that certain perspectives are best off in certain dimensions, certain scenarios, certain eras that are appropriate for that time. That's why you've heard the expression, someone is ahead of their time. While that can be a compliment, it can also be something that is not good for them. If you just think of a simpler thing, such as a musician that puts out an album that's ahead of its time, while that's magni magnificent that it's ahead of its time, and I kind of like things like that actually, um, it probably is going to perform poorly in terms of sales and promotion and things like that. Okay? So, uh, in any case, um, let's start with uh the channeling all right this is a person that's saying that they that they're scared that they have a concern all right who are they channeling okay you've never heard abraham hicks uh have a concern and let me just say this this is about the vibration because when you put it on face value on just verbiage there are some things with that channeler that i actually agree with on a verbiage level but when you read the vibration off them, and we use the word concern, we're talking about a fear frequency, a fear vibration, okay? And uh, when you hear Abraham Hicks talk about, uh, well, anything, but we're going to keep it in the voting realm and things like that, uh, there's no fear vibration. Also, Abraham doesn't tell you to vote and doesn't tell you not to vote. The advice that Abraham Hicks has is you vote vibrationally first. You cast your votes vibrationally first, okay? And then that, that it, at that point, it doesn't matter if you vote. I know some of you won't like to hear me say this, but it won't matter if you vote or don't vote. It will make others of you happy to hear me say, oh, I will be voting. That is my choice. But what's my vibration behind it? And it's, it's most important and more important that I vote vibrationally first, okay? Um, uh, and that's what Abraham Hicks would suggest. And then the rest takes care of itself. And you can vote physically if you want to or not. Just make sure that your vibrational vote is cast first and foremost. All right, but this person is actually asking you not to vote. All right, um, I would really say the same thing uh, if he advised you to vote. I would honestly say the same thing, okay? Aaron Abke, for example, is someone who doesn't tell you, well, they don't tell you not to vote and they don't tell you to vote. Uh, I'm the same way, all right? Now, uh, we may very easily be able to tell through my videos uh, that I will vote and who I will be voting for, but I don't tell you to vote. And in fact, similar to Abraham Hicks, I warn you, you better vote vibrationally first. Um, I don't have an issue with Aaron Abke saying that he doesn't vote versus this man, this channeler, who I guess claims that he doesn't vote, but, but then also tells you, not to vote at all and to tell you that if you vote you're not on the side of the light well you know i'm sorry to add more dimension to this let me give you a, a basis first about republican democrat because this is not about republican democrat ultimately and this channeler may say the same thing but from a different perspective which I would argue is off. Oh, yes, I would. Okay, first of all, let me give you this basis. Once upon a time, you had um, Republicans and they would win. And then later on, you would have Democrats and they would win. And then Republicans again and they would win. And it wouldn't really matter who won because it was always the same Illuminati behind it. And it gave the illusion that people had uh, a choice, that people had any say, that people had any power. Fast forward to 2016 and the podcaster, the podcast uh, interviewer, whatever, 
uh, I, I don't believe believes this. Uh, this is a, this may, they may be a little bit more, since I think they're a little bit left-leaning, unfortunately, there is a victim consciousness that usually comes with that side. I'm not saying it doesn't happen on the, uh, on the other side as well, because you're all over my comments, I see you. But because of that, this, pr this person, you know, thinks that everyone's a bad guy, uh, someone with a tough attitude is a bad guy, and so Donald Trump has to be a bad guy and is part of that, that same system. You know, someone like Aaron Abke is smart enough, you know, uh, spiritually in tune enough to know that that's not the case. Maybe Aaron Abke doesn't prefer his attitude and things like that, but still, there's something different there. This is, this is an outsider. Couple that with the fact that I think that the, for now, that strong personality is extremely important to have. Um, for, for now, that's why this goes back to everything in its place in terms of era, in terms of, you know, not being ahead of your time. You don't want to be ahead of your time, okay? And be full on 5D consciousness happening ahead of its time could be the downfall of 5D happening, actually, okay? Everything in its own time. This is something that a lot of spiritual people don't want to take into account, actually. As Jesus said, gentle as a lamb, wise as a serpent. You know, this is, this is a podcaster, interviewer that probably thinks that Donald Trump is a part of the same Illuminati, so on and so forth. You know, there are these, you know, um, uh, um, paranoid spiritual and truthers that fall in that category. Uh, they're not sophisticated enough to quite be able to tell. From their perspective, I'm not sophisticated to be able enough to tell. So there's a lot of this type of confusion right now in the era that we're living in. So cut to 2016, 2015, 2016, uh, Donald Trump runs for president in the, through the Republican Party. Now, it would make no difference to me if Donald Trump was running in the Democratic Party, I would vote for him the same way because it's a, it's about anti-Illuminati, okay? And the Illuminati, um, it was very clear to someone like Donald Trump and to some of us that the Illuminati is functioning right now through the Democratic Party and has, you know, has been for quite some time. And uh, it doesn't mean that the Democratic Party, you know, is the enemy per se. It's the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they were both the enemy. They were oh, gave you the illusion of choice. That is all that they did, okay? It doesn't matter if you don't like Donald Trump. He's just an outsider that's not a part of that. Is he uh, perfect? Absolutely not. And this is not a Donald Trump worshiping channel because those of you who are normal viewers of mine know that I am incredibly critical of Donald Trump, and this is not a Donald Trump worshiping channel. All the more uh, credit, I would say, it gives me more credit to to um, be discerning about this particular channeler. Okay, uh, that, uh, and I'm going to get to this a little bit more. They're concerned because it's telling they have a concern for civil war. They can't even get the words out of their mouth. The concern here is that. This country, uh, America, is so divided right now that no matter who wins this upcoming election, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, that there is going to be a very the potential for a very, um, very disruptive um, civil violence. Come on, try getting it out uh, in the country. Try getting it out. Um, civil violence uh, in the country. The election will probably be very, very close because that that chasm between uh, the, the duality between the two is is almost so evenly balanced. Real channelers do not have concern uh, because they are connected to source. Source does not have concern. This person, either they're not channeling or I don't know what they're channeling. I, I just think they're giving their opinion and calling it channeling is, is what I think, um, ultimately. Abraham Hicks does not have this. And here's another one who's not even Abraham Hicks, but has no concern. What are your primary concern about humanity's current path and how mm -hmm. can we address them? Yeah, so we'd actually say we have no concern over the path whatsoever. 
our desire is to be a participant of that path and to make it as gentle and as loving and as uh, effective as possible. But every path that humanity is taking will lead to the same place. It just depends on how quickly and how you're moving along that path. And many humans would prefer to have that measurement of we'd be doing better if we got there faster and we don't feel that way. We feel like you'd be doing better if you continue to awaken and open yourself to the journey. This man, this channeler with concern, I really wouldn't recommend that you take any of this seriously as channeling and as advice for anything. I really wouldn't. All right. And so it's not the words at face value, because at face value, I agree with some of those things. I agree with some of those things. It's not about Republican or Democrat. Um, uh, and um, he's trying to tell you to hold your vibration. That's what he's trying to tell you. But he's not doing a good job of it because he's also telling you not to vote. He's telling you what to, he's telling you your best course of action. Only you can decide that based upon your vibration. And this is what left there's nothing wrong with being a little left but this is what they have they they don't they they really have an issue with individualism and i would say as i view the podcaster and i could be wrong about this but i feel that as i read the vibration this person has a little bit of an issue with individuality and they confuse you unity consciousness which does not negate individuality with collectivism they kind of don't know how to reconcile that, how to reconcile collectivism with spiritual, with the uh, unity consciousness, how to reconcile. It, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. In fact, it doesn't mean the same thing. But, you know, from their point of view, and you actually may have this from your more right-sided perspective. How do we go on into the 5D new earth without the same, basically, mentality? And you can, you can. Uh, but, um, one of the, one of the, the, the areas which you're united is that there's no concern. So what do you do then? You, all you do is follow your intuition. Okay. Someone with concern is telling me that they're not following their intuition. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're neither. If you're following your intuition, it's going to lead you to the right place. And when you're on the path to the right place, there's no concern, okay? Uh, this is the first time, and it just happens to be through the Republican Party. This is the first time since it happens through the Democratic Party with JFK, President JFK, uh, in the 60s. I believe what, what he was inaugurated in 61, was it, I guess? Um, uh, this is the first time that we have someone that does not want to do the bidding of the Illuminati. I'm not interested in calling him good, okay? I'm not interested in calling him conscious, okay? We're really not a liberal, conservative, we're the party of common sense. I'm not saying there isn't self-interest there. That, for sure, there is, because there's always self-interest. And these are one of the things that the lefties want to deny. That's a shadow in them that they're denying their own self-interest. The, the self-interest is there. I want, you to, I want you to act like this. I want you to be nice. I don't want you to use harsh language. Uh, that's the, the, their own shadow. They, they, they really struggle to have self-empowerment. And I'm not saying that, of course, they, they, I'm not saying that there isn't something about compassion and things like that. We have to have that. But boy, is compassion weaponized against them through the Democratic Party, which, side note, is more of the Anunnaki mentality, romancing you to your slavery, where the Republican Party is uh, uh, the reptilian, okay? So you have the Anunnaki and then the reptilian mentality. There's no romancing you. I'm just going to take it. And I don't, while I am not evil like the reptilians, I do have that mentality from the higher polarity of um, you want something right, you got to do it yourself. Okay, so uh, um, so I, I am more about that to tell you the truth. And let's go ahead and segue into some other stuff, actually, because uh, I do have a bonus here for you uh, at the end of my video. I'm going to share with you an audio with a client of mine that, like a lot of you guys there, is struggling with, okay, so we're going off into a 5D new earth. Do I have to worry because are my loved ones coming with me kind of thing? 
uh, and I'll, you know, basically you'll have the answer to that um, in that audio. But let's go back to Atlantis and Lemuria that time because um, because while I don't agree with the mostly what they are is Anunnaki faction, mostly Anunnaki faction uh, working with reptilians that represented the darker side, right? Where the Lemurians are the lighter side and, and um, they are being reflected today too. It, it is a little bit different. It's not a, an exact duplicate of what happened then is happening now. It's not exact, exactly that. It's, a, it's, 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 it's actually arguably more sophisticated today, actually. But um, basically, I actually resonate. I don't resonate with the evil decisions, but I resonate more with the Anunnaki. They're more, the Anunnaki in the Atlantis times, they're more uh, entrepreneurial, go-getters, so on and so forth, but they've chosen to do dark things with it. And now because anyone's entrepreneurial and go-getter, Donald Trump, we want to project onto them that they are uh, evil, that they are, you know, like the Anunnaki were uh, at the time. Um, and then the Lemurians, they're reflected in a lot of our, e even in, in my culture, technically DNA wise, even though I don't resonate with the Lemurians so much, because even though on Earth DNA wise, that's actually my, and it helps, probably helps balance me out. I have that because um, I was born into a um, Latin family, but um, a lot's going through my head as I look at that, but I'm really a star seed. And that cancels out a lot of other DNA that is more earthly based DNA. Um, so I don't resonate with uh, the Lemurians are more, they incarnate today more, not exclusively, but more as people of color. Okay. They're very passive. So it's very easy for the Anunnaki Democrats, the current ones, not the Anunnaki of the Atlantean time, the Anunnaki ruled the Anunnaki mentality Democrats to romance them into I've got your freedom right here. I've got your, you know, we're the answer democratic plantation type of thing. So and when we say people of color, I'm not talking about blacks exclusively. In fact, I'm not even really talking that much about them. It's more like more like, you know, um, some Asian cultures, Hispanic, um, um, Brazilian, which in some cases arguably, arguably fall under Hispanic, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, the, the, the Mu people, that's why L Lemuria, the Mu's, you know, the, the, it's, a, um, what do we call that? I forget what we call them. Um, Hawaiians, things like that. But I forget the, the name for that, for that particular race of, uh, what you might, in some cases you might think of them as Asian. Uh, but, um, to tell you the truth, bef before I say s things that I just don't resonate with, um, some of them are awake to the decision that they made back in the Atlantis time. And I tell you that they will be the ones who are, <clears throat> you know, and some spiritual people are going to have a problem with what I'm saying, but... It depends how bad we this it depends how bad this can this will turn out. It doesn't have to be as bad, but we're on a timeline where there's going to be some of this. And I'm going to use the PC language for this. Torches and pitchforks. It's going to be a lot of the people of color. There's going to be a significant percentage doing that part. I don't consider them necessarily as the ultimate front man. In fact, I don't consider I almost consider some of the white people um, of lower consciousnesses, not our conscious, but still on the right timeline, if that makes sense, to actually be a lot of the front men, okay? A lot of the front men, okay? I, I, I'm sorry I'm, you know, projecting a dark timeline, but I'm not projecting anything except for the uh, timeline that humanity itself has locked itself into. And we're not going to sit here and deny that. We're going to take that and make the best of it is what we're going to do. 
Um, I just saw 11-11. There you go. Uh, so, um, I see the front men, a lot of the front men as white people actually, but some people that are going to be savoring, you know, the, um, I hate to put it that way, but you know, they're going to be making up for their Lemurian days and being so passive. And they're going to be doing some of the, uh, like I said, I'll use the PC language, torches and pitchfork work uh, when it comes to some of the, you know, what we would call nowadays the elite. Um, and uh, I'm not, we're not, this is not about, this is the right thing to do. This is the wrong t thing to do. We're past that. This is not about, this is right or wrong. This, this is about what happens, what happens. And all of this ultimately is an illusion anyway. It's an illusion anyway. Play out, it's a play. And we're going to play out the play how it's going to be played out. And that's it. And um, uh, I just don't resonate with that part of Hispanics that, you know, their, their whole thing, it's, it's like a little, it's like 5D overdrive and they did not have the balance, the, the, the dark and light ban balance what Jesus taught, gentle as a lamb, wise as a serpent. They didn't have that. But, you know, and, and, and that Lemurian, you know, it, it, like I see it in Hispanics all the time, you know, they come over uninvited and the people who didn't invite them are fine with this, by the way. This is how passive everything is. They're fine with it. They think it's fantastic. They come over uninvited and they have coffee for three hours and talk about Bullshit. Talk about whatever. Or at least in our era, it would be sort of bullshit. But, you know, in a 5D era, you know, everything is fine. Everything is heavenly. Nothing's bullshit. Everything is great. But this is the problem of being ahead of your time. So um, they're going to, they're going to reconcile that docileness that I, I don't think docile is quite the right word, but that passiveness from the Atlantean era because they want to. It's not because they need to reconcile karma. It has nothing to do with that. In essence, you know, in the big picture, there is no karma. Uh, but because they want to, because they feel called, their, their soul is going to feel called to it. And if you think that a soul is not going to be called sometimes to do something, you know, that can seem ugly or that can seem forceful, you're dead wrong. You're dead wrong. And this is what some sort of left-leaning people um, and I hate to dif dis divide everything as left and right, but this is the 3D world we're living in. We have to kind of honor that and label each other as such. And I don't even think of myself as a right-leaning person. But if I don't think of myself as a right-leaning right, right -leaning person, uh, but I call you left, what does that really make you? It's a little, it may be a little far out. Um, so um, Lemurians are going to, the colored people are going to make up for it. Um, they're they're going to make up for it because that's what they want to do. And how the natives all talk about when that, you know what hits the oscillating fan, that that's the first place they're going. Now imagine, I'm not, I'm trying to snorkel and hang out with my kids. And, and that was more people than that talked about Zuckerberg. I mean, that's all they talked about is how they can't wait to go after him. Boy, what what a corner. I'm not going to repeat the things they said. I'm just going to stop right there. I mean, they're like, the minute that things go down, he is in a lot of trouble. Let's just say he'll be swinging from the end of a rope. And I'm not asking for that, and I'm not saying do that. But just a mat. I mean, and these people aren't playing games. And they said to me, as I'm driving down the coast to go where we were snorkeling, because <clears throat> you go by all the big billionaire houses where you go around the mountain there to the Poly Coast, they're like, this billionaire left us lives there. That's a Google executive right there. My wife works in, in that person's house right there. And they're all talking 24-7 about when it goes down, what they're going to do. New World Order, you are completely screwed. And you know why they all want to kill you? They know you released the virus. They know you're driving up the prices. They know you hate everybody. They know you treat everybody like crap. They recognize you as the enemy. And it's the same thing all over the world. Everybody hates Klaus Schwab. Everybody hates Bill Gates. 
Everybody hates Justin Trudeau. Anybody with a brain hates Barack Obama. It's over. Do you understand that I can't walk down the street without people pulling over and telling me they want to kill you? That's what the public really tells me. And I go, no, 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 we're going to fix this peacefully. No, 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 we're not. Now, obviously, the globals are going to stage false flags and stuff and try to pull on heartstrings and make it look like we're violent to head that off. That's why we don't want to do that. We're going to win politically. But they'll probably push it into full-armed revolt and conflict and then, and then fine. I mean, if that's what they're looking for, that's their, and, but you know what they're going to do? <sighs> they're going to cut the power and say the Russians did it. All right, so what about Donald Trump then? What, what about him winning? All right, well, the rules are still the same, and that is that you are the boss, you are the leader. Why are people looking for leaders outside of themselves? I don't care if you call them Republican or Democrat. And so this will be now the dark side of the people who vote for him. Uh, if, um, you know, if they don't uh, wield their power and say, I'm the boss, this is what we the people want, and that's that, all right? We're not getting such good uh, results with Biden in terms of what we say that we want. And so that's for obvious reasons. He, well, he's been a puppet of the Illuminati for, I don't know what, over 40, 50 years. And, um, you know, if you don't give us what we want, we have to take it back. Okay? I don't care what that looks like. Okay, and I'm not here to appease any spiritual person, any spiritual teacher about what that looks like. It looks like what it looks like. And when you have to take your power back, you have to take your power back. And if it, I'm almost offended if people can't see how nicely we've been trying to do it for some time now. Okay, for about over eight years now, I think, all right? And if you wanna go beyond that, you know, cause we thought we had, well, I, I, I knew better. <laughs> I knew better, I knew this. And, um, you know, I was an independent. I wasn't a Republican or a Democrat, but we thought we had it. We, meaning kind of you guys, and except for those of you who this doesn't count, this doesn't apply. Uh, you know, they thought Obama was the one or whatever, okay? It doesn't matter, nobody's the one. You are the one, we the people. And if you can't get that through your head, then that's going to be, you're just going to be as, as problematic as this old Chandler. And I'm not trying to be offensive, but he did use the word old quite a bit, didn't he? All right. So there's another old person that really, I don't really need to take advice from. And we're, I do a video like this, not to be offensive, but we have to be discerning about what some of these spiritual teachers are telling us. And I would argue that this person isn't channeling. They're giving you their opinion that is reflecting their own trauma, their own personal trauma that you don't need to take on really, that you don't need to take on for, you know, as advice or anything like that, okay? Watch it for spiritual teachers who are spewing their own trauma, okay? So just be careful, you know, in listening to these types of people. Uh, this is not to make a, a, a nasty video about anyone, but it is for us to really, you know, um, unify in our spiritual sovereignty, because that's really important moving forward in building the kind of world that we want to see, right? Spiritual sovereignty. No president is the boss. We're the boss. We just gave them, they're our, fig they're our figurehead. Unfortunately, really, they're the Illuminati's figurehead usually, but it's supposed to be that they're our figurehead and we are the boss. And you have to learn to wield that power, okay? This channeler has not, they, he thinks he's learned it. He's given you all this spiritual woo-woo verbiage. He thinks he's, you know, I would argue that that is not the case. Uh, but it is very important, not only for us to build our world, for, for some of us who want to go a step further and experience something other than just 3, 4, and 5D uh, realities. Because we can, because we have that spiritual, you know, and then the, the weak spiritually minded are going to look at someone like me and they're going to say, well, he's not very nice. He thinks he's going to 5D. And that is not how this works. That is really not how this works. Talk about a trap and a psyop in itself. Remember, your web, your uh, compassion is being weaponized against you uh, by the Illuminati. And some of these more, what you would call left-leaning spiritual people are uh, and teachers 
um, they don't mean to do it in the evil way that the Illuminati do it, but they also by default end up weaponizing compassion against you. So you want to do that, you end up like this. There's his Biden sign. I don't know if I should laugh at that or if I should roll my eyes at it. In fact, you guys let me know in the comments, would you laugh at that or roll your eyes at it in kind of dis like disbelief and and uh, just kind of discuss? Um, because it's not about d the discuss about Biden, the, the, the discuss about <laughs> this is your consciousness. Everything's okay, this is my Biden sign. And so I'll leave you with the audio um, of that I had with my client, and uh, hopefully you get something out of that because it's a little bit difficult. Like, are we are we taking our loved ones with us to the five D and all that stuff? You know, well, it's it's up to them if they want to go or not. But even if they decide not to go, how does that look? Well, how do they leave our lives? How does that look? You know. A slight clue uh, that I'll give you in advance is that first of all, relax. It does not happen in a flash. It's a gradual thing. You don't really have to worry about it. Here we go. Here's the audio. So first of all, I'm really sorry about the disappointment um, in your partner. Uh, I understand that, I guess to some degree. I don't really understand. I'm not in your shoes, but I understand it to the degree that I understand it. Um, these, in a way, I hate to say, scenarios are a bit typical in relationships. Um, doesn't mean that we need to um, part from them or anything like that. I I think a small break from politics, a, a, a just a teeny. And when I say teeny, it could be anything from a full day to an hour or two. Um, um, might do you good. <clears throat> I'm going to send you, you may have even seen it before. I th You probably have an idea of who she is, but I'm going to send you my favorite Dolores Cannon seminar. And go ahead and watch that because I think it's going to give you the spiritual perspective of the split of humanity and one of the things that it teaches us is that we have to accept that not only is not everyone going to the 5d and i'm you know there's a slight metaphoric thing to this because it's not that you flash over to the 5d so when i say it understand that it's a it's kind of metaphor talk because really the building of the 5D really is just that. It is the building that takes um, a long time. Um, um, and the full-fledged version of it, you know, I would say if we're on a fast timeline, 100 years from now, if we're on a fast timeline, so I think we might begin just to relish in a couple of the changes in about 20 to 25 years and the i think something financial could happen for the better there's going to be the financial for the bad too that they're going to try to pull but for the better um seven to ten years and that's just the way i read the vibration which i'm sharing with you but when dolores cannon talks and stuff i don't want you to think see it is a flash. It is a blink of an eye from God's perspective because God is totally different when it comes to perceiving time. And it could just be um, just the way you can use that as, I think I've shared this with you before, the way you can use this as a metaphor is like how do you perceive time versus the way a fly that I think, or a mosquito that I think lives for like three weeks, um, 
you have a different perspective of time. So it's kind of like that. So to God, it'll be a flash. And the Bible says that the God, God is, uh, you know, a day is 1,000 years. So 100 years we have, first of all, we don't even live a day to God. And then 100 years, um, um, like, a, like um, the full-fledged 5D, right? Um, and that's give or take because that really all depends on our consciousness. It depends. Um, it's kind of, you know what it's like? You can't put a perfect time on it. You know, when you're rendering a video or exporting a video and you're editing and you know how it fluctuates five minutes, three minutes, seven minutes, you know how it fluctuates. That's kind of like what the timeline is like. You can't say for sure. Um, so anyway, um, Dolores Cannon, it's very positive seminar, but within that she says, we have to accept that not not only is not everyone going, but but most people aren't going. And uh, those who don't get to go, what happens to them? Nothing. They will just stay with what they have created. That's all. It's not a punishment. Everybody is the result of their vibration. It's, sim- it's as simple as that. And so through along this journey, we're going to get disappointed by people. And you don't have to worry. Because I know you thought this and a lot of people think this, especially when it's so esoteric in their mind. If the earth is, earth is splitting, how am I going to... Are my loved ones coming with me? If the earth is, 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 is splitting, when I say splitting, I mean while we do see it in a physical sense here... Um, and no, not Republican Democrat split, not that kind of split, a, a, a much more, um, a much more, um, truthful split, a much more, what do you call it? Um, the real deal split, a much more profound split. That's the word I was looking for. Um, um, how are they going to come with me? How are they going to... See, because they look at it as a flash. They look at it as a blink of an eye and that their people, their loved ones are going to be removed from them. No, it's going to be the, just the normal process. People are going to die off, whether that is literal or metaphorical in that they will just leave your reality. They're not going to be... And when they leave your reality, it's not even necessarily they're going to have bad thoughts about you when they think back at you. They could. Or we could, um, but not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. That's up to your consciousness. And most times, when we feel shitty about someone, it's not really that we actually feel shitty about them, or that we feel, you know, negative about them per se. What we feel negative about is our trauma in relation to them, our personal trauma in relation to them. Um, so. You don't have to, you don't have to worry. It's not, no, no one's going to be taken away from you and you are the creator of your own reality. So you have to decide for yourself, but I don't want you to think in that space of like almost planning to leave. I know I'm almost sounding, um, like oxymoronic, moronic a bit because I'm telling you how you are, you have the choice but then I'm telling you not to sit in that space too much in your head. But what I really mean is just that, you know, can you just accept him for who he is and stick with it and try not to have bad feelings about it? That would be ideal. Not the sticking with it part specifically, but if you choose to stick with it, can you not judge it? Can you be discerning about it? That's the thing. It's so hard, and I admit this, to be discerning and not judgmental. How do you do it? Well, that's a very sophisticated being. One of the people who does that is called Jesus. But it is hard. I'm not sure that I can do it. So I prefer not to have a lot of people around me. And none of it is wrong or right. It's always right if you're being true to yourself in the process. That's all. So sticking with someone, not sticking with them, 
them. None of it is wrong or right. It's only right if you're being true to yourself. And I'm not sad and I'm not lonely. Some people, you know, they're, they struggle with the sad and lonely part of this. But my spiritual evolution has brought me to a place where I can be alone and not sad and lonely. And that's pretty cool. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to be single forever. It could, and I'm fine with that too. And if I wasn't going to be, it's because I'm fine with that too, though. That's how this all oddly works, right? Um, so, yeah, your discernment is, is correct. This is not about Republican Democrat. Most people are an, an NPC-esque person fo- following, like you said, by the book. There are retards out there. And I'm going to call them retards. This is where, you know, my naughty New York part is coming out. And, you know, I get like Donald Trump or rather I get like me because I'm not following Donald Trump. I like Donald Trump because I'm seeing part of me in it Um, and calling people names. I don't care. I don't care what other spiritual teachers have to say about that. Because some of them have a problem with that, but they're really in denial of things about their own self as well. And NPCs, you know, um, a stronger word is the backfill people, which is technically different from NPCs. Backfill people literally have no soul. I will say that I don't believe that about But it's not a soul that's willing to um, be up to par to 5D. The people who follow the routine, there are these people with I had an issue with him, the guy that was running, and he said he wouldn't fight for it if he had the election stolen from him. In other words, to them, it is fair. If the election was stolen fair and square, that's a fair and square election. If the election is stolen fair and square in a way which we can't expose it and things like that, and in fact, we may not even try so much to expose it, the best we can do is say, I want to recount and take it from there. But to really, really fight for it, no. Because in this third dimensional, NPC filled, backfilled, people filled world, it is normal to steal something fair and square you see the the pet the, the 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 paradoxal oxymoronic sentiment to that line well it kind of isn't that is normal in this world because it reflects the integrity of humanity and this is why we live in this world so Get used to it. I get, Well, it's not get used to it. You're changing the world. But get used to it. You cannot change other people. You're going to be creating your own world. And if I have to practicalize this, am I making up a word there? Practicalize? Instead of making it seem so um, mystical... The people who need to die off will die off. The people who need to stick around will stick around. And that that will happen that way. Because these solar flares that are happening this year, which are a positive thing for spirituality, even the spiritual, there will be plenty of spiritual that can't take it. They're not ready for it. They'll need to do another cycle. A lot of these solar flares will kill certain people. And they won't get past their ascension symptoms. And it's got nothing to do with Republican, Democrat. It's got nothing to do with any of that stuff. It's got nothing to do with, um, it's got to do with the spiritual, integ- integral, people with the spiritual, integral roots and all that stuff um, that are literally a match to the 5D. And so it sounds harsh. There's no, there's no super, super classy way to bring this forth. 
they will die off. And that is how it is not quite like the Revolutionary War where 10% is going to save everybody else. What happens over 200 years that 90% just ruins it anyway? This is different from the Revolutionary War. There are similarities. It's only going to be about another 10%. Um, I don't believe that 144,000 is the people ascending. That's a literal thing. It's a code. It's a computer code. Right? This is a simulation. I'm not saying. I, just, I like to call it organic intelligence. I don't want to reduce it to just a computer because it's not quite that. But it's a great metaphor, the computer. So, but perhaps, perhaps it does though. Also, within not the number, but the whole story surrounding the number. Perhaps it does let us know, which is the case. I just don't know if that's technically letting us know, but let's just assume that it is, that it's a small bunch going to the 5D, a small, sophisticated bunch. And if organic intelligence is what this whole system is, these people will be of, of that organic intelligence, a closer reflection of source. Because there are many people that are not, and we have to accept that. And so I guess that's my message for you on uh, this situation. Hey guys, hopefully you give me a moment here to share some information with you, stuff that I have done for myself, which you may want to do for yourself. Now, this video is a little bit out of my character because I'm simply not the dooms prepper type or anything like that. But then again, this year is also out of character. It's going to be out of character. It is already, in essence, out of character. So this is what my guides told me for myself. It may be something that you want to do for yourself. I encourage you to listen to your guides, but also uh, do your own research in general. So working in tandem, both with your intuition as well as the brain, getting on that computer and doing your own research. I'm gonna tell you two things that I have done for myself. And although I would recommend that positive thinking moving forward is something that we need to utilize as each day goes by in 2024 and beyond, uh, we cannot toxic positive think our way out of this, okay? We have to take responsibility for what we have created that does not mean that we can't make it relatively smooth. Can't promise it's gonna be relatively smooth for everybody else, but you are the creator of your own reality and you can make it relatively or even very smooth for yourself, okay? So um, what I have done for myself is I have purchased a power generator, actually a solar power generator to be exact, um, and there is a reason for that. Uh, it's because I live in a condominium and um, I can't use gas indoor. Obviously, who can use gas indoors? So I'm not gonna be talking to you about anything gas because it is not something that I have experience with. It's not something that I purchased, so I cannot give you that uh, information. Although I would say, though, because attaining gas in an emergency is not gonna be easy either. So I would say that having even a little solar power generator might be helpful next to your gas uh, power generator anyway. But anyhow, um, I also got a little bit of food for myself to keep in case something a little crazy happens. Now, when it came to the food, I'm gonna start with the food before I go into the solar power generators. Um, I use Four Patriots, okay? I'm sure you've heard of them. I think they have ads on Rumble as well. And, um, I did research, it's as good as any food, but it's also the least expensive. So at first I was gonna do a simple 72 hour uh, emergency food kit. Uh, and when I got on the webpage, on the store webpage, I decided that um, I was gonna do more than that because I could afford it. So I did the four week and I was like, what the heck? What's it gonna hurt as long as you don't open it? This food is good for 25 years. I'll be honest, I do think that 72 hours is probably good enough because I don't think that any kind of emergency is gonna last really that long, believe it or not. Although, you know, you have to take into consideration certain things. What is your specific 
circumstance like, okay? Your specific conditions. What city are you living in, right? Are you living in, you know, the suburbs or urban? Um, and let's keep it real. What vibration are you? You know, gotta keep it real. All these things will make for a different experience. I think in general, uh, the people of our general caliber are probably not, not gonna need more than three days. But um, again, I did the four week, I could afford it. So I was like, let me just go ahead and do that. Now, um, that is for Patriots. Their food is as good as anybody else's, but the least expensive. They do have power generators too, but their reviews were not so great. And basically, the pricing is fine, but the thing that's not so fine is that they're, let's just say their specs are lower and they're charging more. So what I went with was EcoFlow, which is very affordable, but really top of the line stuff at the same time. EcoFlow solar power generator, River Pro is the one that I got. The, again, the least expensive one because I live in an 820 square foot condominium with a um, uh, Florida room that I can charge my solar panel in and it's just, it works out just fine for me. Um, and this is, River Pro is a 720 watt hour with a 160 watt hour solar panel. Did you get that? <laughs> so that's the one that I got. These links are in the description below. I did leave a more expensive one that I don't need because my place is not as big as, you know, a full-on house uh, or something like that, you know, and especially with the front yard and the backyard and all that sort of stuff where you may need to power a lot more. This EcoFlow solar generator is the Delta 2 Max with a 2048 watt hour and 400 watt solar panel. So I left that for you there in case you need you need that. I don't have that one, but um, what I do have is the EcoFlow. Um, I'm doing the EcoFlow brand, so, um, and I have heard excellent reviews. I was actually very tempted to get the Delta II, but I just, I don't need it, to be honest with you. But people with a bigger place are gonna need it. You can also find something in between from what I have, and from the Delta 2 Max, okay, what I have again is the River Pro and the Delta 2 Max is like top of the top of the line. So um, you can find something in between if you need, but I thought I'd um, give you both ends of the spectrum. I got the cheaper end of the spectrum because it's, again, it's all that I need. If you have a gas power generator, I would say it really wouldn't hurt to have a solar as well if you can afford it because when you need to get gas during an emergency, it's not gonna be that easy, you know? I think of the 1970s, I wasn't born yet, but I've seen pictures and I've heard my mom talk about it. The 1970s where, you know, you had cars just, you know, waiting in line for gas, like going for, you know, blocks and blocks and blocks. So, at least in the city. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it probably wouldn't hurt to have a uh, solar power generator. So again, I've left these links in the description for you below. If you are interested, you'll be helping me out. You'll be helping the channel out and um, do your own research. I've done the best possible research that I can do. These are the two companies I went with for um, survival food supply and um, for power, you know, because when it comes to power, you know, I think they're going to be pulling some shit. I'm not going to lie. So I really do. So. Uh, I have to say, and my guys told me, go ahead and be prepared for that. It's not going to hurt. Just, just go ahead, you know? So, um, uh, if there's anything else aside from this, as time goes on that I can, you know, give information on and help you with, um, I will be happy to do so. Uh, again, be sure to do your own research as well. Okay, but if you choose to purchase any of these and you use those links, you are helping me out. So uh, I want to give you a thank you in advance and I will see you guys soon.